Hi everyone and welcome to another video about stock photography. The first time we talked about how to get into stock photography, then last time we talked about how to find models and how to direct them on set, and today we're going to talk about the preparation of the shoot. Assuming you have an idea and you also found a model, it will be time to think at a location that will fit what you have in mind. After all, if you want to shoot a group of friends having a picnic at park, you wouldn't go to the city centre, right? If you're shooting close to where you live, you would already know the area and that definitely helps. But in general, I always find it useful to plan the shoot in advance. So let's say, go to Google Maps, choose the point that you've thought about and then explore the surrounding area and see how many different scenarios you could get nearby. And it's also good when planning an outdoor shooting to think about a plan B in case of rain. You will also want to check how the light would be in that place at different times of the day. And this is also true in case you're shooting indoor, as the light will come through the windows in a different way. All the things I've just said will be valid basically for every photography session. But when planning a stock shooting, there's another key aspect to consider. And that is to check if there's any legal requirements or restriction about the place you're shooting in or about anything that will be visible on background. The matter is unfortunately quite complicated and it takes definitely some time to get used to it. But trying to make it simple and easy, I would say anytime you're shooting on a private property, you will need a release signed by either the owner or the manager of the property itself. Some examples could be if you're taking photos in a cafe or an office or even in the pavement right outside the building because sometimes that could be part of the building as well. You will also need a signed release if you're including in the background things such as graffiti, artworks and many buildings too. And because in many cases it would be quite impossible to obtain a signed release for such things, my suggestion is plan in advance and try to avoid them at all costs. A few examples will be the Millennium Wheel, also known as London Eye in London, or the Louvre Museum in Paris, or the Stock Exchange in New York, and you can find a full list of all of them on many stock agencies' websites. A signed release will also be necessary for every person in the photo. Even if only one end is visible or if the person is seen from behind, they will still need to sign a release. So keep it in mind when shooting to avoid any possible issue later on. Both model and property releases could be found on any stock agency website, but my advice is to use the one provided by Getty Images, as that would be accepted by every other agency. I find it very important to share a copy of the release beforehand, so that the models or the manager of a property can read it and ask any question in advance. Also, it's good practice on the day of the shoot to get them signed before starting the session and not at the end. Last but not least, now that you've also chosen a location for the shoot, it's good to prepare a mood board, putting together all the ideas that you want to create and share it with everyone involved so they can prepare it. And you can also use it while shooting to make sure you've gone through all the ideas and situations you had planned. If you need inspiration for some ideas, try looking around at advertising and commercial campaigns of some big brands. I usually find it quite useful. Now that you're ready, go and enjoy the shooting and in the next video we'll talk about editing and submitting the photos to the agencies. Stay tuned!